questions, uh, create frame by frame animation. There is like a stick figure on uh, on page four dash twenty four under um, this week's chapter. So we could quickly create a, a stick figure. So uh, let's create a stick figure. So I'm going to have it. I know. Let's say it's a boy. I'm going to have no fill. It's just going to be a line. Maybe make it a bit more thicker. Say three. Let's see. Can make it a bit more thicker. Say five. Oops. So I'm just going to move it to the side. Then I'm going to draw a neck. So I'm trying to copy virtually what's uh, what's in the uh, the textbook. Then uh, do I can make it smaller. So I'll just scale it down. Free transform. Okay, so we have the, the leg there. Actually, I'll just do this as one. Make it easy for myself. Then uh, the feet. Not the best of uh, feet, but we'll go with that. Then the same thing here. What I generally would do is, uh, if I was doing the, uh, the leg, I'll just copy one of them, so I, at least both the um, the legs are proportional in terms of um, height. Um, free transform. I'll just move it across a bit, and I may run into issues here in terms of frame by frame. Then I'm going to do the same thing with the feet. Actually, I'm not too pleased with the feet. I'm just going to create a stick figure type of foot. Do that. That looks better. Control C, Control V to copy for the other foot. Select it. Move it. Okay, there. So now I'm going to create the um, the arms. And once again, I'm going to copy it, control V, paste it, then free transform, and now I could just flip it across, and then just move it. And with the, the hand, once again, I'm just going to have like a small line there. Control C, Control V to do the other side. We transform to rotate it a bit. Now move it up a bit. Okay, there's my uh, kind of um, stick figure. Now I'll just rescale it. Free transform, uh, let's see, bring it down a bit. Move it to the center. And now what I would generally do is I would convert this to a symbol. That's the first thing I would do. I don't want it on the main scene because I may want to include other objects on top of this. So I am going to convert this to a symbol. And I'm going to make sure it's a movie clip, and I'm going to call it boy. Okay, and then I'm going to double click on it. And now I can actually do the frame by frame animation. So let me just rename that layer from layer 1 to boy. That's one thing Flash doesn't generally, it doesn't um, copy the, the name of that particular layer onto its sub layers because you may have other objects that may be different. 
So I'm now going to do a frame by frame animation. I'm going to do right click insert keyframe and I'm going to kind of try to move this up. So it can be a bit of a, a pain doing this. So you're going to have to rotate this. Then I'm going to do the same thing, right click insert keyframe and I'm going to have it go up a bit. And I'll have the arm also pivot. So I'm going to move the registration point to my shoulder so I can have it rotate. So I basically what I did was I just moved the registration point to the edge of the, the shoulder so I want that to pivot off that. I could have the same thing with any sub symbol. So I could say I want this to rotate across on that particular wrist section. So I keep doing this and I could do the, the onion skinning just to see you know how will it look. Right click insert keyframe. So this time I want to kind of have it go up a bit. Of course I want to need to I need to move the registration point. I need to move this up. So it can be a bit time consuming, but you could see, you know, when you do um, you do play. I could do the same thing now with the other side. I could say insert keyframe. Let me just move these up. So this time I want that to rotate from my registration point, which is going to be my shoulder. And I can move this up, kind of align it, then rotate it. And it depends how smooth you want it. You know, do you want uh, greater gaps between the frame by frame animation or fairly sort of quickly? So now I'm going to do right click insert keyframe again. So I'll keep going through this whole process. Now I want this whole body to kind of come down, it's kind of squatting. So now I'm going to select all of the to come down a bit. So I'm going to select all of them and I want him to come down a bit. of that next. So if we play that, it's not great but you could see if he was walking. So I could do the same thing now. I could have him sort of come down. Now the whole actually on a separate frame. I don't want to in the same frame so I'm going to right click insert keyframe. I'm going to select the uh, the legs. Have them come down and at the same time I want the feet to move out a bit. And I want the body to come down. So you could see now if you were to play that You know, I don't know what, what it's doing, but you can see the, the frame by frame animation. What happens? It, of course, I'm just winging this, I'm just doing it on the fly. But generally, you need to have some kind of a, a theme there, a storyboard. What exactly is going to happen? Uh, there are easier ways to do body animation, uh, i.e., in terms of using kinematics. We will do that later on. Uh, Flash doesn't make it as simple, but you can actually do it. Okay, now remember I had this as a nested movie, so now I could actually introduce it sort of sliding across. So I can now go to the main scene and just switch up onion skinning. And now I could say create motion tween, insert keyframe. 
a particular position and I could have it move. Now, and in addition to that, what I could do is I could add some sort of drums. It seems to be, you know, it's this particular character is playing uh, drums or some form of drums. So I could have, um, let's say, draw a, a rectangle. And I'll leave these as stick figures too. So there you go. Simple animation there. Yeah, frame by frame. The only setback with frame by frame is it can be time consuming. If you haven't drawn, what I would suggest is draw a a sketch, you know, if you're fairly good at uh, drawings, draw a sketch and then you trace around it. So if we were to go online, uh, let's look at some sketches. Say, people sketch or person sketch, body sketch. So, so take this. So if somebody's drawn this, and I'll create a new action script three pointer. So I would actually take a particular sketch if I've drawn it. I will then copy it onto Flash, and I would call it uh, the layer would be sketch, and then I would basically draw around it. Of course, it can be a bit difficult to draw around using the mouse, so I'd probably use a Wacom tablet, but if you don't have access to that, you can do that. What you can also do, which I will be covering uh, later on, you can convert this to kind of a vector image, but it generally won't be a vector image in that sense. So I'm going to lock this layer. Now I'm just going to draw um, lines around it. And obviously the stroke uh, in my case is not so shouldn't be that thick, so I'm going to bring that down. Then I will just curve it up. So if we uh, zoom in, it doesn't have to be exact. But you get the uh, the drift. So it's always a good idea to zoom in. So something we already did kind of do, uh, I think it was a couple of weeks ago, last week, the drawing around a, a figure, and then you can you can see how everything uh, pans out, and then you could do a frame by frame where you can fill it. Um, so if you're really good at sort of sketching, you know it's always a, a great place to start is to sketch your objects and then uh, you know scan them then bring them into flash and then draw around them any questions on that so what I'd like you guys to do is see what you can do in terms of uh, frame by frame animation frame by frame animation you now sometimes you don't even need to do a stick figure you know, there's other ways. You know, I could just have a simple line. You know, I want this line to be uh, kind of creative. You know, I could say, you know, it's going to come down. You know, I could say I'm going to do this using motion twin if, if I want to. 
So, so we give this uh, line some kind of life. Um, so I'll use it frame by frame animation. Zoom in. So I'm going to try to give it, uh, it's going to kind of spring back up. And now if we play this, it basically comes down, and I'm going to keep having it come down, eventually sort of release it. Now if we were to play this, you know, it comes down. Now if I wanted to release it once it gets all the way to the bottom, I need to take into account, you know, I want that to spring back fairly quickly and give it the impression that it's, it's bouncing back. So what I then do is, once I release it, I'm going to do insert keyframe again, but this time I'm going to have the space between so it's going to come down slowly, so the space between one frame and the other is going to be much larger. So here I'm going to let go, then it's going to spring back, and the gaps between the frames are going to be much larger. So I'm going to have it come over here, then insert keyframe again, then come down there, insert keyframe again, Insert keyframe. So I'll come to the edge and then I want that to come back. Insert keyframe again. Insert keyframe. And this is where you need to be using onion skinning. You know, how does it look? We could see, you know, this is how far my animation is going to go. So now when it springs back, I'm over here. You know, I'll say I'll have another insert key frame. It's going to come down a bit more. Now it's going to go back, insert key frame. And I'm going to kind of slow it down. So keyframe again. Third keyframe. So onion skinning does provide a it's a great tool to use when you're comparing previous frames to the current frame. And so keyframe slightly Set keyframe, then come back. So it's going to kind of slow down. Besides using onion skidding, you know, it's always a good idea to play it. There. See the the effect it gives kind of bouncing back. So you know I could have you know kind of a bird sort of sits on it, flies off and suddenly it springs back or something. So once again if we go through this, the way I started off, I started off with when I first pulled it down the gaps between one line to the next, they're fairly close, but when it's released, I want the gaps to be much bigger. So when it's released, I want the gaps to be bigger, so the gap here is going to be much bigger, giving the effect that it's springing back and there's a more speed involved. So there, there's kind of a bamboo stick there. You, know, you release it, then it sort of bounces back. So yeah, give uh, give that a go.
give that a go and see what happens. And what I can do is, you know, you can actually have this repeat over and over again. I can select all these frames. I can then right click. I can say copy frames. Copy frames. Then I'm going to come down here. I'm on the 33rd frame. Right click. I'm going to paste frames. Okay, now once I've done that, I'm going to select all these frames. Then I'm going to right click. And then I'm going to reverse frames. So it looks a bit better. So it seems, you know, there's a bit more life there. So all I did was I just took the frames and just reversed them. So it's just cycling through rather than for a split sort of fraction of a second. It just doesn't sort of appear to be um, going back to the first frame with a bit of a stutter. So I'm going to call this the bamboo. And to give it more depth, you know, we could introduce a shadow at the bottom. We could say shadow. Rather than just the, the stick sort of just sitting there and doing nothing. So now I'm going to create another line. So I'm going to do right click insert keyframe. So I'm looking at the top of, I'm just going to get rid of the onion skin for the time being. So on the first frame we have this stick here and I'm going to draw a line just below that. That's going to be my shadow. I'm going to change that color to kind of a, a light gray, maybe a bit darker. So remember, you're always going to be playing around with different colors and see what actually looks realistic. Okay, once I've done that, I'm going to right click and I want to convert this symbol. I'm going to convert it to a graphic. And when I do that, I come to color effect. You, know, you can select different kinds of colors. And I may have done that incorrectly. I think it has to be a movie clip. So let me go back. Yeah, if I want to introduce a blur effect, I'm going to change this to be a bit darker. Now I'm going to right click, convert to symbol, it's movie clip, call it blur. And now I'm going to go on the right side. There's a filter section in the, uh, the right panel. We will do a bit more of this. I'm going to go to Add Filter, then I'm going to do a Blur. And now I want that Blur to be on more on the Y axis. So you can actually, so let me do it on the X axis. There. There's my Blur. So now I'm going to obviously right click Insert Keyframe. Uh, so right, go back, right click Insert keyframe is it doing no let me delete these frames so I may need to delete these so you can delete the frames remember remove frames now right click let's go back Come on. there you go right click insert keyframe now it's going to copy it each time okay now when it copies it I want to right click free transform I want to make this a bit bigger each time so it kind of matches It matches my stick, you know, in terms of the length. So once again, right click, insert keyframe. I could stick there, maybe move it up a bit. Right click, insert keyframe. Maybe make it a bit longer. Right click, insert keyframe. Move it out a bit. And you keep doing this. For a while, I guess. Set keyframe. Insert keyframe again. 
So remember, you should have some kind of an idea, you know, how is your animation going to pan out? So insert keyframe. Now it's going to stretch out further. Maybe that's a bit too long there. Right click and set keyframe. I'd leave it there. Right click and set keyframe. Right click and set keyframe. Now, a bit longer. Right click and set keyframe. Make it a bit shorter. And I'm going to do this till the 30, 33rd uh, frame. So right click, I'm going to keep doing this. And now the shadow is going to be very fairly small. So to keep from now the, the shadow will go to the other side. Stretch it out. So you get the drift of this. I'm assuming you get the drift of this. So what you can actually do with a frame-by-frame -frame animation, it is there for a reason. Uh, so you're going to have to mix and match your animations along with uh, standard sort of tweening, classic tweening, motion tweening, and of course, then you get the frame-by-frame -frame animation. And I will actually put this on uh, on Angel for you guys, so if you want to see it. But, you know, once again, I've just done this on a frame by frame, so I'm just making sure the shadow aligns with the stick. But now, if we do play it, you could see, you know, when it looks much better with the shadow. Obviously, I could have done much better in terms of creating that blur, making it lighter, but I can always do that again. I could go through each individual frame, but it's always a good idea to do that first as opposed to later. So I'll make it smaller. Yeah, some of you may be thinking, geez, this is just it's too time consuming. Well, that's the way these are created. Animation is time consuming, and yes, it can be fairly repetitive. But the end product can be uh, nice and uh, kind of cool. So I'm kind of nearly there. So I'm going to pause the video, try to finish, and then, then I'll show you the end uh, end product. So I've got the, the shadows up to the 30, 33rd frame. Now I'm going to copy, similar to what we've done before, copy frames, and I'm going to paste them. Paste frames, and now I'm going to actually, I don't know where these came from. Let's actually go back to the 33rd. So there's slightly different shadows. Now I'm going to reverse these. So reverse frames. Uh, let's delete these last two. I don't need those. Let's see what happens. Okay, there's some. There's a sort of a shadow there. Kind of looks neat. So I could actually introduce some background here. Now we could just keep going on. BG or background. I'm just going to draw a background which is going to be kind of a gray or so. Okay, there now it looks much better on the uh, the floor. So there is a floor there. There's lots of things you know we could do. We could have more of a we could have a different sort of a wallpaper in the uh, the back. So let's say I don't know, kind of an orange color. 
let's actually leave the uh, the floor that color. Let's draw a wall, and I'll give it another color, orange color. There looks much better as opposed to just a white, plain white background. So I just did that kind of on, just winged it kind of, kind of. So if you do have a good idea, always sketch it as opposed to, you know, going to Flash and trying to figure that out. You need to know, you know, how is your animation going to pan? So I will actually put this on uh, on Angel. I'll call it the uh, the bamboo. You know, we could do other things. You know, it bounces and suddenly it jumps up. Obviously, it does take time to do that. It takes a bit of time to do that. Okay, so now that we have this uh, the bamboo stick, you know, we're going to move on to create shape tweens. Um, so what we have so far. We just have this bamboo stick that's just uh, springing up. So we are now going to do creating shape tweens. So I'm going to stick with what we have, and I'm going to create a new layer, and I'm going to call it text. Text. So we are on page 4-30. 4-30, we talk about shape tweens. So shape tween is basically an object that moves from one um, type of a style to another. So you could have a circle that uh, you know morphs into a box, or a um, you know some characters you know morph into another character, and so on. So let's just start off first. We have let's just do the the circle. Let's change that to kind of a, a red. Uh, let's put it on the... So obviously the name of this should not be text, I'm going to call it Sun. And how would the Sun actually morph from one to another? So we have this um, Sun object on on the first layer, I'm going to right click, create shape tween. Okay, once again, you know, I have an object from on layer, the first layer from frame 1 through 60, you could have from frame 1 through 20. So I'm then going to go to the last frame, create shape tween. We've already done create motion tween. We've done classic tween. Now we are going to select shape tween. Select shape tween. It comes up with this green line with dots in it. We're going to do right click again, insert key frame. This time, it comes up with a line with an arrow. Now if you go to the last frame, we can change that. I'm going to, you know, just have this gonna come in. It's something's going to happen to our sun. Now, if you play it, you will see what happens to our sun. It moves from one object to another, and it's quite a sort of smooth transition. What you could also have is you could have, for example, a tree. So if you're moving away rather than you're sort of panning out, you could have it morph, so giving you the effect you're moving closer to, you're moving away from it. So that's uh, one uh, one way of morphing it. So I'm just going to remove that, add another layer, and call it put text in there. So this time we're going to add text. So based on lesson four, it talks about text, so I'm going to type in some st some text here. Okay, let's try again. So I'm going to type text. It's going to be kind of a dark color. Uh, let's say kind of a 
uh, black. I'm going to change the, the size. And I'm going to type in bamboo. And I may want to change the, the font to that bamboo. Okay, currently, we really can't do anything with this. But if you do control B, control B, just remember that. If you select the object bamboo, bamboo should not be on my wall layer, it should be on my text layer. So I'm just going to move it. So if you select that text and press Control B, you will see the individual characters are going to break up. So now we can actually move our letters. We can move them individually. We can rotate them. We can do all kinds of things to it. Now if you select all of the letters, all the individual letters, whichever you want to do, and press Control V once again. Let's go back. Control B, Control B. This time, actually you have to select each individual letter, then press Control B. Which, what would happen is that particular letter has been converted into a vector image. And what that shows you is that we can now morph this. So this bamboo, or this letter B, can transition from, say, a lowercase b to an uppercase b. So I'm just going to, for the sake of this exercise, just delete these. Or actually just put them on a separate layer. Let's do this again. Select these. I'm just going to put them on a separate layer. Uh, there, I've just moved them to a separate layer, and I've called, I'm going to rename this Ambu. So I know what's on there. I'm going to rename this to uppercase B. So what I want is, I want this B, I'm going to scale it up a bit. So free transform. Maybe make it a bit bigger than the uh, the other letters. I can actually scale these down. That's what I like it to do. I like it to scale it down. Just move it down here somewhere. So you, let's see where exactly it would look good. Let's just move everything down a bit. So I'm going to put it there at the bottom. So now with the B, I want a morph here. So I am going to create, I'm going to insert a keyframe, the last uh, keyframe. So I'm doing it slightly different, differently this time. Insert a keyframe. So my last frame also has this B, and the first frame also has this B. But on the last, on the Frame 1 through 62, I'm going to delete the B. I'm just going to delete it. And now I'm just going to draw a line. And then I'm going to right click Create Motion Tween. That makes sense. Now if we play this, you know that one sort of stick, it sort of transforms into a B. But letters are not the best sort of uh, choice when it comes to sort of um, shape uh, morphing. So once again, what I did was, so I did it slightly differently to what uh, we did before. So I'm going to undo everything. So, so what we have is we have this B. Then on the last frame, I'm going to insert a keyframe. 
Then I'm going to delete this B from frame 1 through 60. I'm going to delete the whole block. So this time I'm actually just going to draw a circle. Just draw a circle. Which probably look much better. Okay, now I've got to right click not on the last keyframe, but the the place where I have the circle, right click and create motion tween. And that arrow will appear. Now we could see the, the B appear. Did that make sense? So I'm just going to move this to like frame 30. Then I'm going to remove these frames and then copy it. Control C, right click, copy frames, right click, paste frames. Then I'm going to reverse this. Right click, reverse frames. So now if we uh, play this, it goes back and forth. So now in addition to that, to give it more depth, I'm going to introduce a shadow. So I'll say B shadow. W. So now, what I tend to do is I'll actually just go through my movie clip. I could actually have this as a tween if I want to, but I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to throw a shadow at the bottom. What the heck? Just put a shadow there, then kind of blur it, just for the sake of it. Convert to symbol, it's going to be a movie clip. I'm going to call it B shadow. Then I'm going to go to the property section, and at the bottom, add filter. I'm going to have a blur. This time, I want that to blur on the x-axis. I'll just have that sitting there. Yeah. But it looks much better. It seems that the, the bee is sort of in mid-air somewhere. And I could also introduce a shadow. I could make this bigger if I want to. So the whole letters, so you can see for the, all the letters. But I think it would make sense just to have these separated. So now I will have the the shadow shadow for the ambu shadow. So I'll do the same thing here with the uh, the other one. So once again, I'm going to convert this to a symbol. It's going to be a movie clip. And the ambu shadow. Then I'm going to go to Properties and select Blur. And my blur is going to be slightly stronger. And you can change the quality. I can say medium, high. So I'll just stick to kind of a medium. Now let's see what this is. This change it to kind of medium. And now, okay, there, there's my bamboo. So what we've actually done is we've done a frame-by-frame -frame animation along with a, a shape um, morph. And we've also been able to break our letters by doing Control-B, Control-B twice. So remember the benefit of breaking your letters is generally, of course, you can introduce... Um, a morph, but you can also say, I'm just going to have rav here. I'm going to put rav on a on a different layer. Type rav, change the font to something a bit better, maybe a bit more pleasing.
So if I do control B, control B again, I've broken it down. And now I can kind of customize. I'm not too pleased with that font, so let me change it. Let me go back again. Let's go with go with that. So I'm going to select the um, the text wrap, control control B, B again. So now I've broken it down. And now I can edit this, you know, I can make changes. I'm just going to lock all the other layers and just have RAV open. So I just clicked on lock, so I don't accidentally delete anything. So I'm just going to get rid of the R, um, the middle section of the R and the A. And now I can actually fill these if I want to. So I could change the color of this. So let me change this to kind of a green. Maybe on top. Let's uh, fill this too. Let's fill this with a kind of a darker green. Change the fill to be the same. Okay, so there's my uh, V. Uh, let me change this slightly to a more toned down kind of a green. Okay, so that could be my signature there. I'm mean, not going to do other things, I could, you know, uh, adjust it if I want to. I'm not doing too much, but you may ruin it. Okay. And any work that you do, do it's always good to sort of add, a, you know, add your uh, own name to it, kind of a signature. So uh, with your final projects, uh, remember to do that. Uh, so stuff we've done today is um, we've done frame by frame animation, morphing, and how to break letters and how you can make changes to them. So I will actually uh, save this, and I am going to put it on to on Angel under the the solutions week. I think the main part is you know frame by frame animation uh, can give you can create wonders.